we love Washington. Uh huh. And we saw him die hard fans. Yeah, we are. And you know we keep it on 10. One, let's talk about two, the offense. One, two, and three, three. Let's go. And they gifted. We are. Nathan and the Stoner. Yeah, that's ref the dish. Oh, the podcast. Come on now and join <laughs> us. You join it. Greetings and salutations and welcome to episode 160 here on Ref the District. I'm Nathan Perry. That's the stoner. Trev is out sick. So send all of your good wishes to him as far as getting better there and getting back on his feet. And as why we're sending some well wishes, stoner. Mm -hmm. uh, very briefly, just going to wish those in Kansas City well, uh, as there was the shooting that happened there. We're not going to touch on it any further than that other than to send our well wishes here from Ref the District. And then it happens to be Valentine's Day as well. And our Mrs. EP and Miss Stoner are indulging us and allowing us to do this live stream here that we do every Wednesday. This Wednesday just happened to fall on their holiday. <laughs> uh, so happy Valentine's Day to Mrs. Absolutely. Stoner and EP. We appreciate everybody jumping in here with us on this fine Wednesday for episode 150. Of course, we do stream live every Wednesday at 7.30 Eastern on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. So you can catch us live and join the conversation. Or you can listen to us on your favorite audio podcast wherever you listen to those. And just make sure you leave a rating and review when you do so because it helps other people find us. And speaking of that, EP, she has allowed me her space here. So if you're a big Potter head like she is, you'll probably enjoy some of the stuff like Harry Potter here peeking over my shoulder. <clears throat> We're doing some home renovations, and so I've been getting kicked around from room to room. Next week, fingers crossed, yeah. next week I should be in the new space. I'll make sure to share the uh, images of that when we get there. Today's episode is going to be a doozy. We're going to be talking about free agency in the cool down. During the game, we'll be talking about the retainers. Who should Washington of their own free agents keep on the books? So we've got a couple of those listed. A lot of people were complaining about Chase Young being on the <laughs> graphic for today. Uh, that one's more for a free agency, but technically a Washington commander, what they could uh, re-sign here to play in this next season. <clears throat> and then we got some exciting coach carousel information here. Lots of moves have been happening, Stoner, and it's been almost hard to keep up with them. I mean, it just, every time you look, there's something else happening. Another coach is being hired and another GM is being brought on. And it's just, it's kind of exciting times and it's probably you know, what, right now, Washington's chances to win a Super Bowl might be low, but I have a feeling with this team that they're getting there, the chances are going to go up and up and up. And if you want to take a bet on those chances, you can head over to Bet Online, where you have all of your sports wagering news, NBA actions in full swing, March Madness right around the corner. You got you got the Caps playing. The Wiz are actually playing right now. If you want to bet on them or bet against them, all that information is right there for you on Bet Online. Just use the code BELIEVE, B L E A V, to get yourself a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Again, that's B L E A V on Bet Online, where the game starts. <clears throat> Stoner, I used the image here. Yeah. Before I created these a couple days ago because I did have uh, back surgery yesterday. So I, I did all this on Monday with the information we had on Monday. And this was a guy you were excited about. And then even more exciting things happen. So, are you still, is this still the most exciting hire? Tell people who are listening to this on audio who mm. this is and whether or not this is still your favorite hire this week. Yeah, Ken Norton Jr. is the guy that's pictured in there. He's, he's, uh, I, I've liked him a long time. I've actually liked him since he was a player. That's how far back I go with Ken Norton Jr. Uh, when he played for the Cowboys and the 49ers, and he's been a coach for quite a bit with the 49ers, a defensive guy. Uh, with the 49ers, uh, with Seahawks, and et cetera, et cetera. He's a, he's a heck of a good coach. He's got a lot of um, a, a fantastic reputation throughout the league as being a hard-nosed coach, uh, a, mm -hmm. one of those guys that uh, linebackers love playing for him and, and love working with him. But, uh, I'm yeah, I'm super excited about the Ken Norton Jr. hire. I'm excited about a lot of the hires. I mean – it, you ask anybody that is following this team right now in Washington, and everybody has good things to say. 
When you, when you look at some of the other teams, like look at who Seattle hired for offensive coordinator and, and uh, defensive coordinator, you're just kind of like, huh? Right? <laughs> but then you look at Washington, and look, it's just a name right now. It's just a hire. And they've got to they've got to coach their butts off and be able to work things out. But Ken Norton Jr. was a, a really good hire. And and if I can just kind of slide in here, I know you got a lot of more questions and ways to get around this, but a really sneaky good hire is that Brian Johnson hire on the offensive side from Philadelphia, um, because I think what he brings, and we can go deeper into it, but if Clint. Cliff Kingsbury is the guy we kind of think he is, which is he maybe he should be a head coach, but for now he's going to get back into the offensive coordinator role to get kind of back into the NFL groove. And then maybe next he has a big year and then he goes on to be a head coach next year. Then you got Brian Johnson ready to just slide right into that OC role. So yeah. we're always worried about getting a, a Dan Quinn type, a CEO type when you get good coordinators and they end up doing really well and, and then they move on. And then you're like, oh, we got to start all over. Well, if you got Brian Johnson, he just slides. Right. That nice continuity there. I, I think that there's just a lot to be excited about. I mean, for goodness sakes, you know things are going well. When Roger is even oh. speaking good things about it, he's saying this That's staff it. is full of experience and youth and teachers. This is so different, excited for this rebuild. And that's really what I'm hearing. I mean, there's maybe a hire that doesn't excite people for one reason or another. We're going to be talking about some of those here in the, the warm-up. But then there's a hire like Anthony Lynn that was just like, are you kidding me? We got He's going to be our running back coach. This guy I thought was done dirty in, uh, with the bit. Chargers. He should. I don't think he should have been fired with the Chargers. Then he's been a part of the rushing attack out there. With the Shanahan offense, he's going to be bringing that to this, what people keep expecting to be a very Cliff Kingsbury pass-happy offense. And so you're going to kind of marry these two up, and I think it's going to be fairly exciting. Now, there's some legit concerns on maybe having too many voices, but there is everyone I think is coming aboard on this and trying to be on the same page. And I think that there is something here that is brewing. That's really nice. So even though Al Catone here is saying, Hey fans, please stop looking at this with emotion. Think with logic. We'll mm -hmm. think with logic. I think Al Catone when games are on the line and we can take a look at it. But right now we are grabbing the talent from across the league and th it's great. It's stealing the best is stealing the best position coaches within the division. Then it's sure. grabbing people from Super Bowl winning caliber teams and bringing them in here. And it's having all these connections. So when we hit free agency, which we'll be talking about in the cool down, now all of a sudden you got these player connections and these players who want to work with these coaches that they've known. And you'll be able to upgrade this team in a way that I don't think we've seen in a long time. Yeah. And I think there was a, when we started talking about last week and we only really had the head coach and the two main coordinators, uh, when we were talking about with, um, Cliff Kingsbury and, um, uh, defensive coordinator, help me out. It's I'm drawing a blank here. Who, who's the defensive uh, who? coordinator? Huh? Uh, wit. Yeah. Joe Witt jr. Sorry. I was mm -hmm. just blank for a second. We didn't really know a whole lot about who all the staff was and everything. And a lot of people didn't like the, Dan Quinn hire, right? Mm -hmm. But what we knew or what we'd heard from across the league was that Dan Quinn's expertise, his best quality was his ability to put together a great staff. Even in Atlanta, when he had Raheem Morris, when he had Kyle Shanahan, when he had Mike McDaniel, when he had the LaFleur brothers all there at one time, and they ended up going to a Super Bowl with that staff. That's what he does well. So we at least have to give him the benefit of the doubt that he still knows how to put together a staff and add to it the fact that he did that 360-degree look at what went wrong with his coaching in Atlanta. Then you just have to say he knows what he's doing, and he's putting together a heck of a staff, and that that that's exciting. I'm kind of with Al Catone. I'm not a Kingsbury guy. I don't really necessarily believe in his offense or what he's done, uh, but – I'm going to give him a chance because Dan Quinn hired him. But the minute he goes out there and and uh, in the first four games and they're averaging 14 points a game, you know, there's going to be hell to pay if something like that happens. 
Stoner will be real quick with the I told you so in the pack trying on the back uh, yeah, that he's yeah. known for there. So he'll definitely uh, let us know here as I'm trying to get some uh, light in on my face here. The, the one coach that I think most people were really questioning is the offensive line coach. Yeah, that was yeah that's in. fair. And that's, uh, that's a different Johnson. Why do you think people didn't really care for that hire, which you are among those? Stuff. Yeah. I mean, it, it, of course, again, Bobby Johnson, nobody's really heard of Bobby Johnson, although he's been around for a long time. He's an older kind of coach. Uh, but you just, you know, you go back and you say, okay, what did his offensive lines do with the New York Giants? First of all, uh, Pretty he was out of a job. The Giants, yeah. He was out of a job. He got fired by the Giants. Because the last two years, they basically had the 30th ranked offensive line in the league. And that's with two top five draft picks or top 10 draft picks with Andrew Thomas and uh, Evan Neal. So he didn't do well in his last couple of stints. Uh, sure. stints. But he does have a good track record if you kind of go back. He's an old school guy. He's a guy that's going to get in your face uh, and scream and yell and all that other stuff. And and but he hasn't done well the last couple of years, so it's good. It's okay to question that move. But again, this is Dan Quinn, and mm -hmm. I, he kind of knows what he's doing when he's putting together a staff. So we're just gonna have to kind of wait and see. He's got nowhere to go but up with this offensive line. Nathan, Nathan, the uh, predictor of Washington's <laughs> offensive line will be top ten by the end of the year. Um, it, he there's nowhere to go but up. Because yeah. this was a bad offensive line as a group. It was, I mean, it wasn't terrible. Yeah. But, you know, the sacks, they were on pace for a sack record for quite a while. And, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll see what he does. Uh, I understand questioning Bobby Johnson for offensive line. Yeah. I, I think there's probably, even with Cliff Kingsbury, there's some questions that we're going to have. And, like I said, the dice haven't been cast yet. We're 17 and 0 until we find out. Otherwise, and there, right now is the time to be excited because as Grimjaw here points out, Dan Quinn it, it, it seems to be building this redemption squad. There's a lot of sure. ex-head coaches here. There's a lot of these coaches who've had success who, you know, maybe had a down year or two. But mm -hmm. even then you have ones, like I mentioned, Anthony Lynn, he didn't have a down year. Sure. And he, he jumped ship, I think, at the right time because he was able to – uh, leave San Francisco, and then you get Steve Wilkes, who's fired there as the defensive coordinator. And there's, I don't know, is there a position left for Steve Wilkes? Because I would wouldn't mind him being here at all. And so, it, and when you're getting a caliber of Lynn as the run game coordinator, hmm. okay, right? Not the offensive coordinator. Nothing. He took a lateral move from a team that was just in the Super Bowl. What's that to say? come here to be in Washington? That says a lot. It, that yeah. is absolutely just outstanding. And you have a couple others that are kind of making this move as well. You've well, let me the, mention, go ahead, Stoner. Without the going, getting too far off the Anthony Lynn deal, I mean, it is a massive deal. He he went from a team that was in the Super Bowl, who's favored to win the Super Bowl next year. Uh, and he is, he had Christian McCaffrey and Kyle Jusek, Jusek and Elijah Mitchell, an awesome running game. And he's coming here to, you know, Brian Robinson, say what you want. To know. He's got a lot of potential still there. You don't know if we're going to have Anthony Gibson, uh, Antonio Gibson. We'll talk about him in the next segment. The, that's a, something about Dan Quinn to me. He sees an opportunity, he sees an opportunity mm -hmm. to work for a guy that he really respects. And we kind of talked about that whole um, kind of synergy. If Kingsbury does move on and maybe Bobby Johnson, um, uh, not Bobby Johnson, Brian Johnson, there's so many Johnsons, right? Maybe no Brian Ben Johnson, Johnson though. No Ben Johnson. Uh, if Brian Johnson maybe moves on to an OC with somebody else, then you got Anthony Lynn for your OC. So like you said, you've got a lot of guys here who have the potential to move on next year because of they either took lateral moves or even maybe even lesser roles with uh, Washington. So there's a yeah. good chance there'll be some big turnover, but the Anthony Lynn deal that really came out of left field and you know, 
was an impressive hire from Dan. Yeah, Quinn. very, very surprising hire for me to to be able to get a guy like him. Uh, I mentioned Wilkes trying to come on, and people mentioned that uh, Pagano likely took that uh, that spot there with the sen- senior defensive assistant. Again, another coach with some pedigree coming in to be a part of this, you know, kind of redemption tour for Dan Quinn and company. Uh, R- Ryan Kerrigan staying on as the pass rush specialist. Do you, do you mm-hmm. like this move? Do you like keeping on a fan favorite? Um, I mean, I'm okay with it. I don't want to keep him on because he's a fan favorite. Let me kind of make that clear. But obviously they liked what he did last year mm-hmm. because Dan Quinn's not going to come in here and start doing people favors. He's not going to come in and, and keep uh, Ryan Kerrigan around because he's a favorite. Sure. He's not going to keep, uh, for example, Jennifer King because she is the first female, uh, you know, you know, assistant running backs coach. And then if yeah. if he doesn't think that they can do the job, he's not going to keep them around for sentimental reasons, anything like mm-hmm. that. So, um, so some of these moves are pretty, and you even see guys out there who are either lobbying for it publicly. Yeah, Logan Paulson has it. has said that he would love to work with this coaching team and staff and has not been offered a position. In fact, they hired a tight end coach uh, in raw. That was a a recent hire. You got Will Blackman who came out today and talked about how he wanted to be here as a special teams coach and that it, uh, you know, didn't work out. It actually looks like he has deleted that tweet since then. If you delete it, maybe you got it. Yeah. It doesn't exist anymore. That's actually interesting. I kept it, um, uh, handy, but it, uh, it's deleted. Mm-hmm. And so Interesting. Yeah, I, I wonder, I thought it was kind of in not poor taste. I don't want to say it was say it that way, but I thought it was very interesting to be like, Hey, I wanted to be a part of this, but I didn't get it. So he was, he was, he was like, Hey, you know, very best of luck to them, but he was, mm-hmm. yeah, he's very, he's transparent. So it was, it was, uh, it was interesting. I'll just say it, that. It I was. thought it was yeah. a very interesting tweet from him. And well, it's it more like, interesting now that he deleted it. Yeah, I think maybe Dan Quinn or somebody reached out and said, hey, you know, it's not like that. So just be mindful. Uh, special teams coach, did I have them listed here? Is Izzo. Right. Uh, course, as a, yeah, as a special Izzo. teams coach. So that's uh, that's the route that they went. The, the This coaching staff is looking pretty good. Okay. And we knew we were pretty excited about Adam Peters. And yeah. now we can get even more excited because we, a lot of people didn't like the Dan Quinn hire. They wanted Ben Johnson. Josh Harris and Adam Peters are on the way to Detroit. Ben Johnson pulls out. They still have, um, uh, man, who's the defensive coordinator? I can't, Aaron why Glenn. I can't, Aaron yep. Glenn yep. out there to interview. Well, it turns out they didn't take anybody from the coaching staff there. Instead, what they did is they ended up pulling Lance Newmark as the new Washington assistant GM Mm. here in Washington, which is getting some people pretty excited here as Polo Styles would mentioned it earlier. Um, And then Silver Fox asking, you know, do you know anything about him? Do you know anything about Lance Newmark? What do you got on Lance Newmark, Stoner? I mean, he's 48 years old and he's been in the business for 28 years. He's Mm. been in the Detroit system for 20, uh, since he was 20 years old. And it's been all with Detroit. And he's worked his way all the way up to the assistant GM behind the guy who's being praised all over the league again because of the draft picks he's made the last few years, because of the trade for Jared Goff. Uh, think about the draft that he had last year. We all we lost our minds when they drafted Jameer Gibbs with that top 10 pick. I can't remember where he was. I think it was like eight, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but we were like, we were screaming. Do you remember when they picked yeah. Jameer? Like, yeah, it was it was early top fifteen at least. It was it was insane. With and it was one of the reasons why we got excited because we're like, hey, Gonzo's going to fall to us. We're going to get one of these top guys because Detroit's going out of left field here yep. and taking uh, Gibbs and everything. Just yep. kind of we was weird from that point. And then they took uh, Jack Campbell, a middle linebacker that when we were all like, hmm, you know, in the first round. Then they took Laporta, I believe, in the mm-hmm. second round. And he's been, I mean, he's only the best rookie tight end. Yeah. I mean, just massive. Yeah. And then if you look at kind of all their picks in the last few years, they're doing work over there in Detroit. 
and it's super impressive what he's doing. But again, what is throwing me or uh, what's confusing me kind of in the same thing with Anthony Lynn, he's coming over here doing the same thing he was going to do in Detroit and with a successful organization. And he's saying, you know what? I want to go be a part of something that I think is going to be big. And that's mm -hmm. in Washington with Dan Quinn. And I'm going to leave this comfort of what we've got going here in Detroit with everything, with uh, um, um, the quarterback and the great offense and the Ben Johnson staying and a, a great GM that they've got and a great coach and all. And he says, I'm going to leave that. And I'm going to go do the same thing. Maybe he got a little bump in pay, but he's not getting a bump in title. He's going to be yeah. the assistant GM here. That's really impressive. That and Anthony Lynn. And I was just like, my mind is sort of blown. I mean, if if it was somebody who was coming over from like the uh give me a give me a currently bad team here, the Bears. The if Bears. If he was the yeah. assistant GM for the Bears, I'd be like, uh, who by know. the way, Washington did did interview. So <laughs> well, yeah, he interviewed yeah. their assist, yeah, for our yeah. GM and didn't go with them. Smart move. Yeah. I'm glad they did because <laughs> uh the Bears drafts have not been anything to to smile yeah. about, but yeah. So I, I like that move really just because of that. Yeah. So Command D's had asked this question. I wanted to make sure I get answered because Kevin earlier thought we didn't engage with our audience, which of course is ludicrous. We do, Kevin. If you're still here, uh, much appreciation for you tuning in today. But Command D's uh, says, "Do we have a DBs coach yet?" And we do. Uh, Nine hours ago, the commanders have set out to hire Tom Donatel as their mm -hmm. DB coach. Any yep. uh, information on Donatel? I don't have a lot of, uh, I don't have a big file on Donatel, but um, I'm just going to kind of have to keep going back to that sort of um, thing. I just, my crutch at this point, which is if Dan Quinn says, I want you to be a part of my staff, well, we're going to have to believe that this guy's got a lot to yeah. offer to uh to washington yeah so i i do have just a little bit on donatel okay so okay. he was the minnesota Vi minnesota vikings defensive coordinator in 2022 before that defensive coordinator for the broncos in 19 through 21 a db coach with the chicago bears with the 49ers before that secondary coach and with the broncos again nine uh 2009 and 2010 he was actually the defensive coordinator here in Washington in 2008. So he has some experience uh, in Washington Redemption before. Tour. Yeah. And, and I think one of those things kind of those, that, that thread, like you said, it's a redemption uh, tour. It is, this guy has experience as a defensive coordinator at several different stops. And again, Washington has people who is collecting people from across the board and, is trying to put as much talent in here as we could. Um, and, I want to throw so, in on the defensive line um, yep. deal real quick in that, you know, with Kerrigan, that was another one where I was just kind of pondering. I'm like, they hired Kerrigan as assistant defensive line coach, mm -hmm. but they didn't hire anybody at that point when they hired Kerrigan for the defensive line coach. And I was like, well, why would they hire a guy to be the assistant to somebody that they don't even know who that is yet. But it was one of those deals where they were waiting for the Super Bowl to end, and they went and plucked another San Francisco guy, which was uh, Daryl Tapp. He was their assistant defensive yeah. line coach, and now he's hired as a defensive line coach. And you're plucking from the best teams, yeah. and I think that's amazing. So it's another great hire on the – for a defensive line coach. Yeah. So I've been I've been corrected. I did read off the uh the wrong player uh profile, the wrong coach profile. Jonah, I got Donatel? I got Ed Donatel. Yeah, uh, who dad, who's right. the dad. I did the dad. So appreciate Gus Bus, Tommy T, and others who had pointed out that I had the uh the wrong head coach. So I have the Donatel page brought up here, and I did not look closely enough <laughs> that I was pulling up Ed Donatel because I read off Tom Donatel. Uh, but then I pulled up the Ed Donatel uh, coaching page. So that is my bad. So higher there. Um, so we'll see how that goes out there. He was, 
Let's see. Donatel is the son of longtime NFL assistant Ed Donatel, defensive back coach for the first two years, and he is a defensive passing game coordinator, secondary coach last year. So he's spent four seasons working with the Seahawks before making the move to Los Angeles. Uh, ben Standig here with the report. Uh, Donatel spent the last three seasons with the Staley coach out there in uh, – in there. So Josh Alper as well from pro football talk on the article info that I'm just grabbing that from. So uh, appreciate again, the correction. We'd like to uh, make sure that we are as correct as possible. And sometimes, yeah, you know, a little, little mistake well, happens, well, happens in there. We're not so, perfect. That's why we got all you all in here to correct us when we go off. You, you can't correct our opinions. You can correct. <laughs> facts, so. Yeah. If any, any facts, I want to make sure that we do get right. Um, yeah, tap Daryl tap was tapped as the defensive line coach. You have Norton jr. As the linebacker coach, um, defense pass coordinator is going to be, uh, Simmons. So I just think that Washington did a good job collecting some of the coaches and they've kept a couple, they kept Pritchard, yep, uh, to be, Pritchard, the to, be to be the QB coach. That was, he has experience with the QBs. I think that you know, Cliff Kingsbury talked with him and, the, and and with Dan Quinn, and they were just like, hey, this is somebody who we want to, you know, bring on to the uh, to the party here. Brian has some concern with that, though, and this is a common concern I've yeah. heard, Stoner. So That's is fair. there anything we can ease the concern with? Because, Brian, here, what most concerns me is almost none of the offensive coaches have worked together before and they seemingly are bringing different styles to the to play at as well. Does that concern you? Is there anything that could potentially ease our minds when it comes with this? Uh, I use the crutch that, hey, Dan Quinn knows what he's doing, but that's absolutely a concern. Mm -hmm. Not just, like you said, and like someone else said, not just the fact that uh, they haven't worked together, but they come from a background of different style of offenses. Yeah, And so that you're going to rely heavily on guys being able to work together and have an understanding in those coaching rooms to be able to say very, you got to be very clear about everything. You know, Cliff Kingsbury is the offensive coordinator. Basically anything that he says goes with this offense, you're going to have to put whatever personal feelings about his offense aside and work with him. And they obviously are going to work that out in uh, before you hire a guy. They're not just yeah. going to hire a guy without, you know, they're not going to hire Anthony Lynn without talking to Cliff Kingsbury first and the two of them getting together and having a good understanding before they get started. But it's absolutely a concern. Uh, I I do have a concern. I mean, I have a concern with Kingsbury to begin with, but yeah, that that's another layer to the concernness. Yeah. I, I, I think that, all of this will actually work together mainly because of Dan Quinn and the message that they're bringing is that we do have, and we know this from military, right? Like the diversity of thought mm -hmm. uh, process here. So they're trying to bring in these different thought processes because they're trying to have one unified focus mm. and we've seen it fail before. Obviously it didn't go well in Carolina as one of the ones that people tend to point out, but if you have the right, people in charge to kind of help guide you towards that. I think that you can really uh, work it out. So I do think that this is going to be interesting and in how this is going to work and how this is going to be uh, good because you were talking to Anthony, we talked to Anthony Lynn. This is a guy who again, comes from the Shanahan, uh, you know, San Francisco 49ers. He was leading the running game. He's also actually has a, a different running game background as well, but he's going to be bringing in some motions. He's going to be bringing in the stuff that Cliff Kingsbury doesn't normally do. And as locked on law says that this is going to be fine because these hires are going to help keep this Cliff Kingsbury offense oh, yeah. from getting predictable as they're going to, you know, aligned vision tommy thanks for thanks for that because yeah, I, I knew there was an actual term that they were gonna been using. Get, that's gonna get so, annoying that's gonna yeah. be like is, is, is this our new buffalo nickel is this our new is this our new position flex is aligned vision well i'll yeah. be darned i like the aligned vision uh and i thought it was interesting a couple of people who got aligned into different roles remaining on the staff we knew martin mayhew was going to be continuing while well, he's finally got his job title figured out 
He's mm. transitioning to the role of senior personnel executive advisor to GM uh, Adam Peters. Uh, those two have worked together. Adam Schefter with a report there. So we knew that one was going to stay on. Marty Herney is also staying on. Uh, mm -hmm. transitioning to an advisory role supporting football operations. What do you make of the Martys kind of sticking around and, and their new roles? Uh, I don't know what to make of it. Uh, they obviously weren't that great while they were here for the last couple of years. I don't know where this is going to go. Is this something that they're just going to hang on to un, you know, until after the draft, until after um, – training camp or you know until they get into the season and then let them go i don't know I, I don't know what to make of it but they obviously made a good impression when you talk about herney and uh you know the two martys and mayhew and herney and you talk about tavita pritchard ryan kerrigan and i think there was one more coach that they that i'm trying to think maybe they're what maybe that was just pritchard and kerrigan uh, that they Who retained. Kept. Yeah, I'm trying to think of. Uh, I had just closed out of that tab too. So that might be it. But they obviously made an impression because again, mm. he's not come. Dan Quinn, Adam Peters, they're not coming in here to do anybody favors. They don't owe. They don't have anybody that they owe. Josh Harris doesn't owe anybody something that maybe Dan Snyder may have promised, and he would. <laughs> he might have to owe people certain things. They're not doing that. So uh, with you know Pritchard is is good at what he does. You know Kerrigan is good at what he does. And apparently the Hernies are pretty good at what they do. They're not going to be in on those decisions, but they're going to be coming around. So yeah. that's uh that that's impressive on their part. Yeah. There we go. Bobby Ingram was is still the go. wide receiver coach. Good so call, thanks Ryan. Brian for that uh that shout out I knew there. there was one more. Yeah. The um it it's going to be interesting to see how they all come together with this aligned vision they've got coming for the team now do stoner and i agree with the aligned vision mm. when it comes to who to retain for these washington commanders you'll have mm. to find out in the game Talking about coaches and GMs can be all exciting and everything, but we, they're not the ones who play the game. That's going to be the players on the field. And we've got a few here in Washington that I think are worthy of keeping on the team. Free agents yeah. to be, but might just work out in this new Dan Quinn-led commander's team. And we're going to be talking about them here right now in the Don't Sleep game the retainers, as it were. If you, of course, you can head out to don'tsleepenergy.com, use the code DISTRICT, get yourself 10% off your entire order. That's your drinks, that's your gear. Actually, I have my Don't Sleep shirt on underneath oh, okay. here. So nice. I have that, and then uh, Stoner's got the drink on hand. Maybe not drinking that at 7.30 at night because he will be up all night because those things rock. I use those to make sure that I'm up and moving when EP has all the chores for me to do in my retired life. So let's get to some of the players that we think Washington might uh, do. We've posted a couple of these going forward uh, or in the past. We're going to post a few more. I hope you guys have liked those uh, those player cards that we've developed and, and kind of using to get conversations going on both here on our community page and on Twitter. We appreciate everybody who jumps in on there and comments. Let's start with the man here in the graphic, which is Kendall Fuller. This is you. You have, I think we have a video coming out. Is it tomorrow? Is that our DB one? Uh, we've tomorrow, not recorded him. No, tomorrow is um, uh, Brian Burns. Brian Burns. And then on yeah. Monday, it will be a wide receiver. So, no, we haven't talked about who you want in free agency. Mm -hmm. uh, I pushed out that we should re-sign Kendall Fuller. So yeah. are you against re-signing him here? He is one of the unrestricted free agents that Washington has. That's a tough one. I want to hear what people think about um, Kendall Fuller, whether we want to keep him or not. I mean, he's 29. He's going to be 20. Or I think maybe even today's his birthday, yesterday, something. He's 29 years old, right, which is getting up there in football years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he just came off of the four-year, $40 million contract. So he was making $10 million average per year. 
He statistically, he had probably his for his second best season as a pro this yeah. past year. He was very highly rated on PFF and um, he didn't have as many passes defended as he has before. Um, but he had more tackles than he usually does, but he is getting up there. But you also have to think about what they have when you leave him behind. If you decide to move on, who are you leaving behind? St. Juice, Forbes, help me out. Anybody else that you're really worried that you really want to keep? Do you want that to be your starting corners, Benjamin St. Juice and uh, Emmanuel Forbes? Or do you want to bring in another guy, maybe free agency? So you have to think about that. The one thing that a lot of people say that we have to stop thinking this way. Just let me put it out there for anybody who's thinking this. They're not going to sign a team-friendly deal. No. They don't, players don't do that. They don't sign these team-friendly deals. So it's they will – actually, today. Stoner, I will correct you just a bit. Okay. They will sign a team-friendly friendly deal if there is no other deal available for them. They have no okay. problem uh, taking on that, that kind of deal. But you're right. Not there, very many players are out there. A lot was made about Tom Brady usually taking less money than what he probably deserved. Uh, mm -hmm. But yes, they they absolutely these players they deserve to get paid. They the the money tends to go to the owners and and not so much to the players. And so the players, the NFLPA does kind of negotiate to try to get more and more of the salary cap or that that increase. And so then. Uh, you know, players reset the market. Kendall Fuller probably not resetting the market, though. No. Uh, quite a few different free agents are available in that regard. So if if Kendall Fuller is not breaking the bank, why would you not take him? Because you know that he's good and he has experience and he's the best uh, option for, or was the best option last year for Washington. Why would you not resign him? Well, I from a Washington point of view, if you can sign them to a team friendly deal, of course you would do that. They would do that with every single unrestricted free agent that they have, but that's not how they work. And if, if his only deal is kind of a team friendly deal or is only kind of, he's going to have plenty of offers. Let's, let's not get crazy here. Okay. Uh, and if Washington's is kind of the best deal and it's a team friendly deal, he's still probably going to move on. Because then you're kind of coming back with your tail between your legs. Basically, this is the best I can do, and that's not even what I'm worth. And But you might still sign for less somewhere else is what I'm saying, rather sure. than coming back to Washington with a deal that's not good enough. So we just kind of got to get that. If you're going to get Kendall Fuller, you're going to have to pay what Kendall Fuller or what a 29-year-old um, starting cornerback in the NFL sure. is worth. So but Yam has a, Yam has a couple of comments on on the the signing timing, and so I wanted to get to those before we get to any of these other ones. Uh, Yam here is saying, you know, let the guys play the market. Then when they say, hey, I'm still here, you work the deal because maybe they didn't get the deal elsewhere. We saw Washington actually do this last year with a couple different players. Uh, where they let them hit the and last couple of years, really. J.D. McKissick famously had mm -hmm. a deal with the Buffalo Bills, and then Washington was like, no, no, we, we'll match that. And J.D. McKissick wanted to come here back to Washington. Yeah. Uh, so you do have some, some leeway in that regard of let them test the market. When they realize the market isn't there, you know, they'll come back, like you said, tail between the legs and just take what they, what they have yeah, available not many. to them. Not Normally many. They'll go. They'll go like. Ken, yeah, Kendall Fuller, by the way, there. ranked the number three uh, free agent uh, defensive back here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> but if you yeah, look at, yeah, go ahead. If you look at some of these guys uh, who have left, and we're sitting there going, we couldn't match that when when um, um, Carter DeAndre Carter left to go to the Chargers, I think, on like a one year, two million dollar deal, mm -hmm. and we're saying Washington couldn't match it. They probably tried to match it, and he didn't want to come back with his tail between his legs saying, this is the best sure. I can get. Sure. Tim Settle was another one of those that, mm -hmm. that left on a very, very cheap deal, and we're all sitting here saying, we couldn't pay that for Tim Settle? Well, that's why, because they don't want to do that. They don't want to come back and say, well, this was the best I can do. I need to go out there 
and and show that they can be there, there's also playing time and other things that come in there sure. so the the other side of that coin stoner is uh yam here saying that we need to wait until free agency starts to see where the cards fall you can sign your own players right anytime. correct me if i'm wrong anytime sure okay so why should they why should they lock up some of these players and not let them get to full-on free agency well, because then you're going to find out where the value is. It's going to be possibly, you don't know this, is possibly going to be higher. You don't have the sort of having to negotiate against other teams what they're putting out there. Or another team can't come and look at your offer that you've given them and then raise it a little bit to entice that player to move. You're the only one that can negotiate with your own free agents right now. They, other teams can't talk to you, so let's use Kendall Fuller. Right now, they could be sitting in a meeting room trying to hammer out a deal and come up with a contract offer, and they bring it to Kendall Fuller. Well, Kendall Fuller's agent can't go to the Chargers and say, here's what they're offering me. What can you do? He can't do that until March 11th, I think. So mm -hmm. another few weeks until they're able to do that. So you, you get that opportunity to not have to negotiate against other teams, but you also – um, possibly are going to pay him too much because you don't know what other teams are going to offer as well. So you can't go over the top of the other teams. So let's say you go out there and you say, okay, we'll give Kendall, we'll give you three years, $36 million. And then free agency comes around and everybody laughs because nobody was going to offer him more than $30 million. So that's what, that's the risk you run into signing them now. But again, mm -hmm. you could say, give you three years for 36. And he says, okay, and then free agency comes around and says, we we're going to give you 45 if you would have been on the open market. And, and so yeah. you got a better deal. So there's a, you know, there's the old risk reward kind of deal. Yeah, there's there's a little bit of chat uh, happening with this uh, in this regard. Lots of people are commenting with a couple of different names. I mentioned uh, Fuller was the listed on a lot of sites as the uh, third best available uh, uh, cornerback. The two ahead of them, Jalen Johnson, uh, Legarius Sneed. I love Legarius Sneed. Bring him to just Washington want, now. Who just won a, a Super Bowl ring. Mm. And and so we'll get to those. We'll, we're going to get to those in the free agency one. But I just yep. wanted to point yep. out, show the people I am watching those. I'm not necessarily bringing in those comments because we're going to be talking about free agency. And it's okay to bring up the free agents in the sense that, hey, don't go after Kendall Fuller when you should be sure. going after this person sure. instead. So we do encourage those comments uh, there. Code Talk are going to lead us into the next one. For the panel, do we want Kendall Fuller to be a veteran defensive back, or are we okay with Curl being the veteran defensive back? Cam Curl is your guy, who you're going to get the jersey if he signs a long-term contract yep. 100%. here. Do you think that Kendall Fuller is going to be on this team to start 20, 2024? I, man, I'm just kind of, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to say. I think he will. Um, he, there's a better chance of him being here. If we're going to compare better chance of Fuller being here than curl to me. Cause let's not forget. Kendall Fuller is fairly local, went to Virginia tech. He yeah. was drafted by the Redskins. And then of course traded in the Alex Smith deal. And then willingly came here and signed with Washington as a free agent for what was a fairly um, team-friendly deal at $10 million a year for a starting quarterback is a pretty darn good deal yeah. on the open market back even if it was four years ago. So he likes it here. He's has ties. He, he's been here almost his entire life. And so I think he wants to be here, but he won't take a lot less money to be here. Sure. So, I think the chances of him being here are greater than Curl. I think Curl is going to go regardless. Curl's going to the highest bidder, whoever that yeah. may be. I don't think he cares about fit. I don't think he cares about location. I don't think he cares about coaching. He wants to go to the highest bidder, and that's where he'll go. If that's Washington, great, because I love Curl. But yeah. I just think the chances are less of him being here. Yeah, he's listed fairly high on uh, undrafted free agents in the safety realm. Uh, number three on the list that I currently have in front of me. Uh, he's the one who I think out of the ones that were in the picture, that uh, the graphic that we created for the show, 
is the one that I just didn't rightly know if Washington would re-sign him. Of mm. course, we love him, right? And we we like him, but we also like Deron Payne, then didn't agree with re-signing Deron Payne because right. they got Mathis and it was supposed to be it was supposed to be Allen and, and Mathis, and now you have Deron Payne again. And so to me, this Cam Curl one is the most interesting because it's just like he is a good player. And he has shown flashes of being a really good player. Mm -hmm. I don't think he is going to end up being retained here. And and largely because I don't think he's going to end up being worth the contract he's going to sign Mm -hmm. elsewhere. I think that even though he is a very good player, very good safety in the NFL, he, as I've pointed out before, he ends, he lacks the impact plays. Sure. He's solid. He's consistent. He's a team player. He's very smart, but he's just not somebody who, you know, when you're looking at the defenses where our new coaches or new hires have come from, they have impact players. And Cam Curl is an impact player. He's just a solid piece to a good defensive unit. And I think mm-hmm. that they're going to go shopping for somebody who brings in that impact. So uh, that's why I personally think that Cam Curl is going to walk and be elsewhere. So continuing down the list of potential options here, we mentioned in one of our player cards, Curtis Samuel Mm. is somebody who is an unrestricted free agent. Should Washington retain Curtis Samuel? Uh, In my opinion, no. I don't think that they should retain Curtis Samuel. They don't, I think it's better. They had a, a really good trio of receivers last year with McLaurin, Dotson, and Samuel. But I think they can get better at that position just in terms of a different type of receiver, a bigger receiver, instead of having a bunch of 5'11 guys all across the board. If you even go all the way to Deami Brown, these are four guys who are 5'11, six feet tall, and are burners. And I think they need a possession type receiver. He doesn't have to be, sl- that doesn't mean slow, but a guy who's going to do the dirty work, a guy who's going to go in the middle, a guy who's going to be able to get up there and snatch balls, um, you know, when they're in the center of the field. And because that's what this uh, offense likes to do for sure. And a guy who in the red zone who can go, you know, we've been wanting a guy who can get that fade, uh, corner fade forever. And mm-hmm. I think that's the type of guy that they need. So I don't, I like what Curtis Samuel brings, but I don't think that that's what they need right now. They need something a little bit different than what he is. But and not, and also I I have a little bit of inside information from a couple of years ago his first year here. The guy doesn't love football. He's really good at it. He doesn't necessarily love football. And I don't need that for another 3 years because that first year really tainted my opinion on him, even though the last yeah. two years, I mean, he's only missed one or two games over the last two years, and he's been pretty darn productive. But I, I'm i ready to move on from Curtis Samuel. Yeah, I, I I put down earlier to re-sign him, but I've, I've put out there several different times. You've got to, in my opinion, you've got to retain either him or Gibson the third option is you got to get somebody replace one of those two because those two are weapons in an offense. And the reason why I ended up today siding with Curtis Samuel is because Cliff Kingsbury spread him out wide. You know, Curtis Samuel as a natural wide receiver, I think has the skill set I think would work in an air raid offense a little bit more than Gibson, who has kind of been this flex running back returning to his wide receiver role and so, you know, I'm a big Gibson guy. And so it kind of pains me that it didn't stick with him today. Yeah. But Curtis Samuel, I think, is an offensive weapon who was the second most consistent wide receiver this last season. I do hear and see, right? This is, there is a lot of good wide receivers available in the draft. Uh, people even pointing out like big blue horses here, the best generational talent available, although that's kind of a sour word, of course, in Washington phrase, rather generational talent. 
available at number two, right? Marvin Harrison Jr. is an absolute stud. He fits the bill of one of those tall wide receivers. There's a couple of uh, other free agents out there. Uh, T. Higgins, uh, Michael Pittman Jr., who I don't think is really the big play wide receiver that Washington needs, but is a taller wide receiver. So that's where I think it's going to hurt Curtis Samuel as far as his chances to get here. But I mean, when people talk about the draft, you got to remember free agencies before the draft. So Washington has a chance to shore up positions here in free agency so they can focus on other positions in the draft. Not that they shouldn't be doing best uh, player available, but when you have people of equal talent, you can take the one that's going to fill out your roster a lot better than necessarily taking a uh, otherworldly tell. Although Marvin Harrison Jr. is the probably the, my second player on the big board. Uh, but when you're talking about QBs, QBs are going to be taken before your second over your second best player available, which is Marvin oh, Harrison so- Jr. So they're going to draft for need, not for best player available. Well, when you talk about impact stoner, the yeah. quarterback position is going to have a little bit more over Marvin Harrison Jr. If we had a, if I, if I felt more confident in Sam Howell, I would take Marvin Harrison Jr. in a, in a heartbeat. 100%. In a heartbeat. But I think that there's a, yeah. Marvin Harrison Jr. They're <laughs> not, get out of your not head. Not going to happen. They're not taking him. I don't care if they, if he falls to the third round, no, okay, if he falls to third. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're not going to take him because they're going to take a quarterback. It's, yeah. it's a lot of smoke. And, and in which case, as Locked on Law here is also agreeing, if they draft any QB, they're drafting for need. It It is what you need. Uh, I have stats I'm working on. You guys love my spreadsheets. There's a spreadsheet coming, probably will be ready by next week on the uh, reasons – to or not to trade back. So I'm, I'm getting together all of that information as far as why, in my opinion, why Washington should not. Uh, but yeah, if you're picking at two, you're going to, you're going to take one of the QBs that's available to you. Who that is, you know, well, we'll have to wait that's, and see. That's going to be fun <laughs> debate. We might, I don't know, next week maybe, depending on what happens, we might have to start the uh Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, Drake May, Michael Penix, JJ McCarthy debates. Okay. Well, Caleb Williams won one. Uh, and then after that, I've been I've been looking through tape and I was watching a lot of Jaden Daniel today. Spoiler alert. Uh, I was really hot on him like two weeks ago. Uh, after what I watched today, I'm a little less excited, but I mm-hmm. that's only one or two games that I was able to get through today uh, while I was resting. Um, so, well, I'm going to start charting a lot more games and seeing what we got there. I've heard, I heard, I think it was, um, Mike Garofalo or Garofalo. Sorry. I don't, I think he's pronounced it Garofalo. I believe he said that Drake may is the third best quarterback of the last five years. Oh yeah. He- of any quarterback coming out. Yeah, there's been a couple of people who have been who've been talking up some Drake May uh lately. Which we're talking I, about Trevor Lawrence. Yep. And I can't remember who the second guy was, but he was above Joe Burrow. He mm-hmm. was above just all these guys. You're like, really? That's the way he has them rated. So he thinks he should go one one. So yeah, it's gonna be let, a good debate. Say let people talk. Chicago into anybody other than Caleb Williams. Yes, please, please, please. We're talking into do that. In, uh, uh, Justin Fields. The reason why we, t- for the record, for our listeners here, the reason why we don't typically talk about the draft this far away from it is because there's so much to to talk about. There's there's only so much to talk about. So yeah. what happens this this early in the draft talk? Right, people give their first draft opinions. They're pretty benign because it's just how things they think are going to go. And then you have to get the really crazy stuff out there. Like what if uh, Chicago keeps Justin Fields and they draft Marvin Harrison Jr. And you start, it's that, that's the content creation world for you, even on ESPN and Fox sports and all that. That's Mm -hmm. what they do. So we try to push off our draft talk until one, we've had a time to actually research some of these players. And then two, because 
we're not trying to talk all this nonsense that Washington's going to trade up, you know, three first round picks to go after Caleb Williams, which by the way, if he is a quarter of what Patrick Mahomes is, you got to pay the price. Oh, absolutely. hundred percent. And by the way, the combine is in two weeks. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Or what's say the 14th? Yeah. It's in about two weeks yeah. from now, the combine yeah. when all these guys are going to get measured and speed and, and all yeah, that Maryland's so, QB not invited, by the way, to, yeah, to well, his, uh, to his, his little brother. Kid, not, yeah, not, not invited there. Uh, we're not talking about that right now, though. We are talking about why don't we go to the guy who I compared Curtis Samuel to and okay. Antonio Gibson. There was actually, yeah. I'm surprised, quite a few people earlier to include Roger, who is a an I formation power back kind of person, said to keep. Antonio Gibson. Roger, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought I saw you yeah. back in Antonio Gibson there. So do you keep AG or not, Stoner? I don't. Uh, I mean, he he is really the definition of a jag. He's just another guy. He's he's about as average as you can get. He's got some great potential, but there's a ton of dudes yeah. just like him out there. And, and I will point to a guy like Elijah Mitchell in San Francisco, who I think is a fantastic running back, but I mean, he's behind Christian McCaffrey, but even when before McCaffrey was there, he was a guy that, you know, he showed some nice flashes, but he's, he's just a guy. That's what Antonio Gibson is. Even if he goes somewhere and kind of gets a starting role and has some real good success, I still would say I don't regret not signing him because he's nothing special. He's sure. not a game changer. You don't game plan for, for Antonio Gibson, regardless of what his skill set is. He just, he's never shown it in four years with Washington. He has never shown a consistent, explosive type player. So I'm not, I'm not re signing Antonio Gibson. Yeah. Nope. As, as much as I like to defend uh, Antonio Gibson, I won't re sign him here. I do think it would be important to have a weapon like him or Curtis Samuel. But you can also turn somebody else into that weapon. Running backs themselves are, are I'm not going to go as far as to call them a dime a dozen, but you can find quality running backs up and down the draft board. You don't have to spend a high draft pick on one, and you can get somebody really good. There was the kid in Baltimore who was an undrafted free agent, Mitchell. You know I loved Keaton Mitchell. Right. I thought I thought the world of him. He ended up getting injured. But I mean, he showed why you don't have to necessarily spend value on a running yeah. back. There's a lot of running backs that are out there, but I'm with Leon here. You got to let a G walk. Um, I, I don't agree with Gregory here. I guess I am going to defend a G one last time here. He is not a fumble dummy. Uh, he, he he had fumbling issues year two. Yeah, year two. And that was it. He's no. not. He is. He has not had any other fumbling issues outside of that. So, um, I mean, there the, are so many, so many examples. I mean, we look at Jameer Gibbs, who was a stud. We uh, and uh, Bijan Robinson was was a stud. Look, those guys are great, but they're not winning you games. Christian McCaffrey is argue was arguably the best player in football this last year. Now he was should have been the MVP player. in my opinion, but. He was a top 10 draft pick. Yeah. He, now he's on his second team. He's been traded, but, you know, Carolina's a mess. Uh, and he was awesome this year, incredible this year. But when it comes down to it, what Brock Purdy does on a Sunday, that's what's going to decide whether or not you're going to win games. Christian McCaffrey's going to help, and he was a big help to them. But do you think that the San Francisco 49ers – would not have been in the Super Bowl if Christian McCaffrey was not on their team. I think they probably still would have been because they had a great team and Brock Purdy had an excellent year and Elijah Mitchell is an excellent running back. Now he wouldn't have put up Christian McCaffrey type numbers, 20 some odd touchdowns, whatever he had, but he's still good enough. And if Brock Purdy is going to carry you, then you're going to get into the Super Bowl. Just look at Kansas City. Isaiah Pacheco was a fifth or rounder. Sixth seventh rounder seventh round and that's great and he had some he had a really good season but that team gets to the super bowl and wins because of their quarterback not because of their running back and yeah. that's that goes for every team out there they 
Detroit's not going to get to the Super Bowl eventually if they do because of Jameer Gibbs. They're going to get there because of whether their quarterback can lead them there. So that's why when people don't like that term, a devalued position, like a running back, that's why it's devalued. Sure. It's not It's not that they aren't important to a team. Sure they are, but it's not what's going to get you over the top. Yeah, you, you rather have a quality of one, but you can have – you know, there used to be bell cow backs, but there's not too many of those anymore. I mean, you got yeah. King Henry, uh, Saquon's likely still a bell cow back, even with the, the wear and tear that he's put on his body. But realistically, you're going to have by committee, by committee now. Mm -hmm. And you can get, as I mentioned, Keaton Mitchell was fantastic in the mm -hmm. short time that he was healthy. And you can get that as an undrafted free agent EP here gonna throw her some love here on valentine's day she loved herself some Jarrett freaking patterson that mm -hmm. guy had eight touchdowns in a game for buffalo he was an undrafted free agent he showed you know that he you know could play reasonable in uh the time that he had not great but reasonable uh mike h asking a question that's gonna we're gonna pause the the retain uh talk just now but he was asking how to get a compensation pick. So there's a formula that the NFL has. It's convoluted in how it works, Mike. Mm -hmm. But what it typically is, is you have to spend less in free agent than people stealing from your player. So if Curtis Samuel, Antonio Gibson, Kendall Fuller, and some of these other free agents, if they sign big contracts elsewhere and you do not spend as much taking on players, you can end up with a compensation pick. Uh, again, it's not set in stone how that really works out. So you're not yep. always guaranteed just because you spent less than what people signed elsewhere. Um, but that is the general idea behind it is to not spend big money on other people's free agents. And that should get you some compensatory picks there. But it's again, not, not set in stone because there is a lot of different factors that play into it as well. If if Gibson goes somewhere and uh, he has an amazing year, an MVP year type year, then they may get something for him. But again, it does come down mostly to mm -hmm. the free agents you sign in the offseason. And Washington's going to sign a lot of free agents in the offseason. They're going to be mm -hmm. um, getting some, some big names and some big numbers. So don't expect, as usual, don't expect many comp uh, compensatory picks for Washington in the coming years. Yeah. Uh, let's move on from the ones that were on the graphics. Let's talk about one that you reminded me of just before the show. And mm. actually, it's kind of funny because I I, I was talking with uh, in our Ref the District group chat, but it's it's all pro Revo. Jeremy Reeves is a free agent, and he's buying into what Washington is doing with yeah. all of these coaching changes and and also you know the GM changes. Do we keep Jeremy Reeves on as our special teams kind of ace? Yeah, I think that that's one of those deals where he's not going to go out and kind of uh, command a salary that Washington is going to be freaked out about because he is a special teams guy. So, I mean, when they had four safeties at the time, at, when everybody was healthy, he was not one of those four. He was the, like the fifth guy. He was the emergency sort of safety because he was your special teams guy. Mm -hmm. Special teams guys don't go out and get big deals in the open market. So if he wants to stay here, then he's probably going to stay. But the the injury does play a role. He did have a, a knee issue. It wasn't, you know, like an ACL tear or anything, but still it cost him most of the season. Um, so that goes into consideration as well. But, yeah, they probably keep him. He is the, the kind of guy that uh, would stay put even if something else was a little bit bigger on the open market, because it's not going to be that much bigger. We're talking about yeah. like he might get a, a a two year seven million dollar deal, and maybe somebody offers him two years eight million. I don't think that's going to entice him to go somewhere else. So yeah, he'll, I, I think he'll be back. Yeah, fan favorite. He did, as Josh pointed out here, uh, tell Ron that he would follow him wherever uh, after the pro announcement. But remind me, Stoner is is yeah. Ron have a job yet? No, he, he'll be out Pebble Beach golfing if Revo wants to go uh, golf yeah. with uh, Ron Rivera all summer and yeah. into the fall. 
And I agree with Roger here. He might just be the smartest safety uh, who was on the roster. Uh, yeah. Very, very. He, he's a smart. He's a smart player. Oh, His issue was he's just not as athletic as those ahead of him right. on the right. roster. He can. He kind of had that uh, that issue. Who's the linebacker Bostic, who I used to rail on all the time. He, he you know knows where to be. Step too late to get there. So as right. as a. Uh, Jeremy Reeves, excellent uh, player. I would love to see him on the staff. It'll be interesting to see if that's somebody Washington goes after. There's a lot of players here that we talk about. There's probably, uh, you know, let me just ramble a few off, and you just tell me when to stop if you wanted to. Well, let me get through the big one first. Okay, there's right. one other big one, and then there's going to be a bunch of people we're going to be like, no, pass, right? <laughs> right. Jacoby Brissett. Yeah, that's a big one. I mean, I don't, I don't know what to think of that because you're going to draft a, um, a quarterback, right? So you're going to have, um, let's just throw it out there just for craziness sake. So you're going to have Drake may you're going to have Sam Howell. He's only going to be in year three of his four year deal. He's shown that he can play. He's not great. So you're going to want to kind of keep him on as that insurance policy. But Jacoby Brissett's going to command $10 million to, to, to what? To be a third stringer? He's going to go somewhere where he's going to want to say, hey, did you see those two games I came in in the second half this past year and, and I excelled and I brought my team back? Did, did you see that? Maybe you need to give me a shot to be a starter. So he's going to go somewhere where he's going to get $10 million to either fight for a starting position or – be that high priced backup to come in like he was here in Washington. They're not signing him. Would I like him to sign him and be the number two and have Sam be the number three? Absolutely. Washington's <laughs> not gonna do it though. Yeah. I we expect Washington to take a uh, QB at number two or, or at least within the first round, but they should be picking at number two. And then you're gonna have Sam Howell on the roster. And I've saw I saw the comment I think even put it in there for unless they trade or if they trade Sam, definitely keep her set. Sam Howell does not have trade value right now. Uh, it just it, that's just the truth of it. He's he is uh, he he was drafted by the old regime. He didn't show enough last year for a team to be like, yeah, I'll give you a fifth round pick for the fifth round rookie that started a year for you. That's just not yeah. just not how the Probably. it works. So Jacoby Brissett would be an interesting hire because I think that it would just be, it would make Sam Howell the third string quarterback. And you, a lot of people I think would be alienated with that, but I mean, it would probably be the right choice because Jacoby, who do you want coming in for a uh, Jaden Daniels or Drake may or Caleb Williams? You know, do you want Sam Howell or do you want Jacoby Brissett who can potentially help out the offense as well? Mm Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I, I would go with, I would want Jacoby Brissett in that situation, but I just yeah. don't see them, uh, see them doing that. So, uh, yeah, that's probably the biggest name left. So let's just go over some quick lightning round stoner. Cody Barton. No. Nope. Cornelius Lucas. Um, yes. You're not doing very good on the lightning part of this round bit here. <laughs> okay, uh, F.A. Well, Obata. Yeah, Second. Uh FAO Bada, no. David Bada. Uh no. Kalik Hudson. Yes. Tyler Larson. No. David Mayo. No. Joey Sly. No. Dan Quinn would rip his only <laughs> two hair follicles out if he had Joey Sly as a kicker. Jameson Crowder. Uh no. Byron Pringle. No. Alex Arma. I love me some Alex Arma, but no, not in this offense. Sadiq Charles. Um, no. A failed attempt at being a pro bowler, Terrell Burgess. No. Fan favorite, Jabil Cox. No. Brandon Dillon. I don't even know who that is. Was that the tight end who was here tight for end. five minutes? No. Yeah, <laughs> James Smith Williams. Um, yes. Casey Tusacks. Uh, yes. Curtis Brooks, defensive tackle. I don't even know who that is. No. Tucker Addington. Uh, that would be a no. The long snapper? Wait, Tucker Addington? That's right. He was yeah. he was the guy. 
I mean, no. I, what, <laughs> okay. All right, you're, you should trade up and draft a long snap in the fifth yeah. round. It works out all the time. Alex King Blue. No. Yeah, right. Most most of the ones in the lightning round are just not uh, is just not going to happen. Uh, yeah, Brian, those are restricted free agents. Um, yeah, so I, I was just listing off the free agents that are with Washington. Um, so not all of those were unrestricted free agents. James McWilliams, Casey Tuhill are. There are a couple exclusive uh, restricted free agents. But those are the players Washington has the ability to retain if they want. And I just think that they're just going to end up uh, passing on that. I do apologize if my Wi-Fi is being a little bit cruddy, which I do see the bars now here, TJ. I am in a new location. You can see the Harry Potter thing. We're working out a situation. Eventually, I'll be in my new spot. But right now, I am uh, in the Harry Potter room. So I do appreciate you all sticking with us here tonight as we're going over those who were supposed to retain and now we'll head over and talk about those in free agency. And the first one we're going to talk about, stay with us, Leon here, talking about whether or not Diggs is available to leave Buffalo. Not exactly a free agent, but some people might agree with Leon there and wanting him to come here. So stick with us here in the cool down. As I mentioned beforehand, Stoner looked like he was being super excited about this one. Maybe he's given us the thumbs across here and he's given a thumbs down for Leon's question. Uh, if Diggs is leaving, looking to leave Buffalo, do we jump in the mix and try to grab him? Stoner, you're not a fan of that decision? Two, two, two reasons. Well, I love Stefan Diggs. I think he's a fantastic football player, wide receiver. This is not the type of guy that you want in your first year trying to establish something new in terms of culture and winning attitudes. You don't want to bring in a guy who you say what you want. There's a lot of excuses as to some of the reasons that he does his things, but he does kind of bring some scrutiny, some unwanted eyes into an organization because of some of the things he does. And then number two is he is the exact same. He's he's Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, Curtis Samuel, De'Ami Brown. He's the same size as all these guys. He's a great wide receiver. I'm not trying to dismiss him, but he's not the type of wide receiver they should bring in, and he's also not the character kind of guy that you want to bring in. And I'm not dogging him. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm just saying that he's not the kind of guy you want to bring in in your first year where you're trying to change the, I don't want to say the word. They, you just don't want that kind of guy here. Yeah, I, I think that it would be a mistake to to bring in Diggs when you're looking at taking a quarterback as early as you are because Diggs has shown kind of his frustration with much more experienced QBs. He doesn't yeah. want to be on a team that is recalibrating as Dan Quinn wanted to put it right. He, he wants to be on a contender. He was on one in, in Minnesota and uh, got himself out of that situation. Right. Didn't believe in Kirk cousins. Then with Josh Allen, he loved it there until he didn't love it there. And that mm -hmm. is what with Josh Allen should be a perennial contender. So one, he wouldn't want to be here in Washington for longer than it takes him to get through the Dulles airport. So yeah, that's, uh, that's, a, that's going to be a no from me on that one as well. Now there are a couple of other free agent wide receivers, and we're going to mm. be talking about some of those in our player focus. And as always, make sure you hit us up on our social media channels and let us know if there's someone specifically you want us to do a player focus on as uh, that is our new uh, series that we have coming out. We have eight free agents picked out. The first one was already out, and that was Tyron Smith. And then we have Brian Burns coming out tomorrow. And then on Sunday, it is Michael Pittman Jr., who you uh, stoner would really like to see here in Washington, maybe a little bit of preview on that one. Yeah. I like Michael Pittman jr. For, kind of for all the reasons that I talked a little bit about earlier, but he's a bigger receiver. Uh, he hasn't had necessarily had the opportunity to 
make big plays because he ne- hasn't necessarily had the quarterbacks in Indianapolis the last four years. You think of who he's dealt with, the Carson Wentz's of the world. And then one year he had the Matt Ryan, Ellinger, and another guy I can't remember. Last year was Richardson and Minshew, and he had mm-hmm. uh, his rookie year, he had um, uh, Phillip Rivers. So he hasn't necessarily had the chance, but he's put up massive numbers. Did you forget Carson Wentz? I said Wentz. Yeah, I, I mentioned Wentz. But, uh, yeah, he had Carson Wentz for a whole year. I mean, he had 109 catches last year, sure. Nathan. Yeah. Now he doesn't have the big home run numbers that you sort of look for in your number one receiver. But, again, he is that size that you're looking for. He's 6'4", 225 pounds. He, has, he catches like 69% of the balls thrown at him, so he has a, an awesome catch percentage. Uh, he's what you need differently than all of these – these little burner guys that we have on the outside. So, um, I mean, his speed, DJ Chark is six, four sub four, four. Well, I mean, Pittman is six, four, four, five. So he was four, five, two at the combine. So it's not like he's slow. He's not a plotting kind of big receiver. He's not Steven Sims or Cam Sims. He's not that he's not. So that's the kind of guy I want. So I would love Michael Pittman jr. He's outperformed T Higgins in the last four years and T Higgins has had Joe Burrow for four years. Sure. He's also had smart chase and he's had, uh, yeah. Um, who's the other guy, the, the third receiver that they got, who's also a free agent, I believe, uh, Boyd Boyd. Yeah. He's a, um, uh, unrestricted free agent as well. But I mean, I just, I like Michael Pittman jr. And I do also appreciate that that one game, not this past season, but the season before when Washington played, and he had a chance to basically wrap up the game for them, and he dropped a wide-open pass, so I appreciated that. So that's why I think he was trying to tell us <laughs> something. He was trying to say, hey, look what I do. What I, I want to come play for you and uh, and Terry McLaurin. It would, be, it would be interesting. Pittman Jr. reminds Leon of Garcon, and that would be – that'd be – that that's some high praise. Pierre Very Garcon underrated was receiver yeah. here in Washington was Pierre Garcon. Yeah, Pierre Garcon was was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that would be that if he turns out to be Pierre Garcon, then sure. I just see him more of Terry McLaurin type than I do see him being uh, Pierre Garcon. So, uh, okay. and I just don't think you need to. Uh, Terry McLaurin's on the roster. PNW headed out, taking the boss lady to Valentine's dinner. We do appreciate everybody who stayed with us here on this Valentine's Day. Hopefully, you do have uh, yourself uh, somebody to spend the time with. EP and uh, Mrs. Stoner uh, again indulging us here uh, and allowing us to to still have ref the district on our standard Wednesday. Let's get this one out of the way now, just because uh, he's up here, and I definitely deliberately. Put it, uh, put his picture up here. But Chase Young is a free agent. Washington, of course, shipped him away for a the 100th pick in this upcoming NFL draft. Do they take him back? Does he even want to come back, Stoner? I mean, you just can't even imagine what sort of circus it would be if he came back. So no, they're not. They're not even gonna talk to him. They they lost his number. That ain't happening. Yeah, it is. It is definitely not. No one seems to want uh, want it to happen, and and it would be. I think it would be irresponsible to take him back. I think that he'll probably end up uh, on a roster somewhere on a one year or two year deal, kind of a prove it type situation. Uh, but it ain't, it's not going to be here. The uh, mask here. I'm more likely to buy a Shaka Tony jersey than bring back Chase nice. Young. Yeah, that's that's probably true. Shaka Tony is a uh, is actually a, a uh, edge that Washington could potentially still have on the roster. He was suspended for the year, but I don't think that was his final year. So he might have one more uh, deal with us there. All right, let's let's uh, let's go down the line here that I have. Let's go talk about some safeties. Are there any safeties? that you can think of that you would like to see here in Washington, not named Cameron Curl, who we talked about during the game. Give me a, give me a few from the top of the list. And uh, Antoine Winfield jr. Oh, yeah. Xavier McKinney, Kyle right. Duggar. Yep. Hmm. 
Um, Jordan Whitehead, I mean, CJ Gardner Johnson. I think they're going to have to go a little bit uh, into the what's that? You know, the bargain bin on safety here. Uh, Winfield, man, he's going to cost a, a lot of money. Love mm-hmm. everything that he does. He's the type of safety that everybody covets. Uh, so, yeah, I just don't think uh, he's going to he's going to get a massive deal. But yeah, yeah, I'd love him for sure. So how about any of those others that I listed, Stone? Are you big on maybe a Geno Stone? How about Jeremy Chin? Remember, he was uh, he was somebody who was supposed to be right there with Chase Young in the Defensive Player Rookie of the Year award. Yep, yep. And kind of yep. not been good. Maybe maybe we say no just because we don't want to continue being the Commanders. <laughs> right. But I think there's some something to the um, the bargain bin with a guy like that that can yep. be serviceable and can do good things for you. Um, safeties, you know. You got to have good safeties, but I'm not a big like you have to have the the top safeties uh, in the league. Washington had not last year, but the year before the combo of Curl and Forrest were top five ranked um, yep. DBs and they had a very good defense. But, it, you know, it was still a defense that gave up a lot of big plays. So yeah. I, I just don't think this is one of those areas where they should spend a lot of money. So go after a guy like maybe Geno Stone, like you said. I'd love to have him uh, steal him from Baltimore for sure. I think we'll be interesting. We're going to be talking about linebacker free agents here in just a moment. But I think that that with the current staff, I feel like they're going to be more focused on those cornerbacks and more focused on the linebackers than they will be the safeties. So I do think Mm -hmm. that they're not necessarily going to pick somebody. And then it will also matter – where do you put Quan Martin? Do you keep him out where he started sure. to really thrive in that kind of slot role, or do you push him back out to becoming a safety? Because he has the ability to play either. I do hope that they kind of make it so that way they have you know him in one role and he can specialize in that role. So I think that he kind of got the raw deal early on with having to do too much. Uh, Kevin here with the uh, new Mark connection inside track on Gardner Johnson. Uh, free yeah, well, agent, uh, to be out of there from Detroit. You'll probably learn a lot about Gardner Johnson, depending on what Washington does. If Washington offers him and, and either gets him or, or he goes on to somewhere else, then you'll know that he's the type of guy that new Mark would like, but, if they don't even offer him, then you know that Newmark is like, this is not the guy you want on your squad. So, yeah, sure. there's a little bit of inside information from him uh, that's going to help. I think that's – we talked about it during the coaching section, but it's just like when you have the coaches and the people that we're bringing in from across the league, you're going to get a lot of inside track on these players and that it's going to be – you know, kind of exciting to see who they bring in because, you know, sometimes you have the Ron Rivera's who bring in their guys like a David Mayo, but then sometimes you're bringing in guys who have a higher caliber because that player really wants to play with them and just happen to be on free agent. Uh, JG is asking everybody, what free agents do you want to spend big money on? Uh, We have our top uh, eight here for Ref the District that we're going to uh, to give out and dole out during the next couple of weeks here in our player focus. But that is an excellent, um, you know, question for you as far as that's come. And uh, spoiler alert, Noah, Queen is one of the eight. And we'll get down to the linebackers here. And like I said, in a moment. All right, cornerbacks, you were not high on Kendall Fuller. I said go ahead and retain him. You want Legereus Sneed, mm. who might end up getting franchise tag. Uh, yeah, a lot might. of other people wanted Jalen Johnson. The Bears are unlikely to let him go. So who else would you be in the mood for? Maybe an Adoree Jackson, Miles Bryant, Bryce Hall, C.J. Henderson. You were a big fan of Jeff uh, Okuda, who's taken Okuda. just after yeah. yeah, just just after Chase Young. I mean, I thought Jeff Okuda was just going to be a fantastic corner, but he's already going to be on his third team when he was drafted the same year as Chase Young. This is going to be like Chase Young. Chase mm-hmm. Young's probably going to be on his third team already. That's how um, kind of out of favor he is with teams. He's just not as good as I thought he was going to be. But this is this is where you spend money. 
with a with a cornerback. I know it didn't work out when they signed William Jackson the third, but this is where you want to spend big money if the guy is right. And and I'm a big fan of Legarius Sneed. I, I'm not taking into consideration what the Chiefs may do. I mean, they sure. may franchise him, they may sign him to a long term deal, whatever. But Jerry Sneed is the kind of guy I want on my team. He is ornery. He um, he is physical at the line of scrimmage with receivers. And until the Super Bowl, Nathan, until the Super Bowl, he did not give up a touchdown the entire season for a starting cornerback. And he gave one up in the Super Bowl, I think, to Juwan Johnson. Can't remember. But that's how good he's been all season. Think about that. A starting corner who I believe played in every game, maybe he missed a game or two, didn't give up a touchdown all year. Yeah. That, that's the kind of guy I want on my team. Cornerbacks are, are really important, especially when in this uh, this day and age where the the rules favor the offense, right? And I mean, they, they kind of always try to favor the offense because mm-hmm. offense tends to put butts in seats. Yep. And, and then it's just kind of gotten more and more in, or in that line. So you want somebody to be able to kind of shut down a top wide receiver and force an offense to go elsewhere. I, I personally feel like Washington should be spending their big money elsewhere and not necessarily on a cornerback that, I mean, I think Kendall Fuller is an excellent pickup for Washington. I think he's going to be at the right price point for Washington in this regard, because it is an important position, but Snead, I think just maybe takes a little too much of the cap where I think that they have, stronger needs elsewhere on the roster that's fair. Uh, one of those areas is the linebacker core uh i mentioned cody barton and david mayo uh and Kali hudson who were your numbers two through four linebackers cody Mm -hmm. barton was actually supposed to be number one uh but really um davis finally came along okay and i think it played well um, so linebacker is somewhere where I think that you can get somebody good, maybe a Patrick queen, maybe a van Ginkle, Willie gay is out there. Uh, Levante Davis, Bobby Wagner, Devin white, uh, are out here. Good linebackers out there. Good, good linebackers out there. And something I really think that they would like to do is get themselves, uh, one of these quality linebackers to help them run the defense that they want the physical, uh, defense that they want. Uh, Frankie Louvu is apparently the guy that uh, Gus Bus wants. Uh, mm-hmm. Poor man's Fred Warner. Yeah, I'd take a poor man's Fred Warner. I'd take Fred Warner. Is he a free agent? Can you sign <laughs> he, I believe he, I mentioned his name. No, Fred Warner is not. Oh, okay. uh, no. So is yeah. Van, There's, remind me of Van Ginkle. Is he the guy in Arizona? Miami, Miami? and no, okay. he was Miami uh, and just he, Absolutely terrorized, terrorized Sam and the uh, so that guy in uh, Arizona. And I can't even remember his. He was like a defensive end, second stringer. He's the one that um, had the sack fumble touchdown on uh, Sam Howell yeah. early in that game. I can't remember. His, Gr- maybe it was Grizek or something. Anyway. Yeah, something like that. I always sure. get that mixed up. But yeah, Van Ginkle, he, he was terrorizing. <laughs> and I'm always really afraid was. of that. Like you see a guy just absolutely kill your team. You're like, oh, I got to have him. And then you forget to look at the other 16 games where he was kind of pedestrian. Now he wasn't. I'm not saying that. No. But that's kind of what Washington does, has done in the past. You see a guy terrorize you and you say, oh, I got to have him. And then he comes here and then he just have to have familiarity bias, right? Like we'd exactly. like to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we're going to pass on defensive tackles, I imagine. Yeah, no need to grab a defensive tackle in free yep. agency. Washington's got four decent ones, a couple good blue chippers, and then a good backup in Mathis in Ridgeway. So we're going to skip through that. Then it is the edge rushers. Now, Stoner, you and I, we disagree on the second most important position. Let's do All a right? poll. Let's do a quick. Can we do a poll like in here? Didn't I see one time that? We're able to do a poll. Like if a you can poll. figure it out, you can. If you can figure it out, get in there. The simple wow. question is for people to answer for Stoner and I. Yeah. What is the second most important position in the NFL? QB is number one. Right. right. 
What is the number two most important position in the NFL? Yeah. Before we answer, maybe move on, but have let's wait and see what everybody thinks is. So we got um, left tackle, offensive tackle. Mm -hmm. We've got left tackle, pass mm -hmm. rusher, long snapper, spider monkey, having some fun there. Gus with an edge rusher, left tackle, left tackle. Uh, is this a 4-3 or 3-4 three, three, defense? One, two, yeah, three, three, four has been kind four. of tempting to run. I'm very interested in seeing where they have. Teddy going to go with the blind side. Mass collector, center, not a bad option there. Andrew going to go here. Uh, with a left tackle as well. Yam, left tackle. It looks like left tackle's winning um, on this one. But uh, I, I'm I'm with Gus and those who said edge rusher. It is, to me, you got to get a pass rusher. You got to get some, the best, the best position or the most important position is the QB. The second most important is the person stopping the QB. Uh, you can have a good left tackle, all right? But if you have a quality pass rusher who can attack, I think as who said it here, Gus Bus was saying it, you know, an edge rusher can attack the right tackle. You know, the left tackle is going to be on the left side. But if you put yeah. Bosa out on the right or on the on the opposite end, you're never going to get that matchup. You're going to have Bosa have, against your right tackle. But assuming you have a right-handed quarterback, he can see that guy. He can see that sure. guy if he's coming Yeah, a lot good that stunned people for TJ Watt, for yeah. Bosa, I'm, for like it's yeah, like Montez Sweat made a good had a good year, six uh six sacks in both locations, and he was predominantly coming from that side. So to me, you get you get an edge rusher here. So Mike is well, gonna get a big shout out here. You you take a tackle like everybody yeah. else in the you chest. do want to build from the inside out. I do agree with that. Uh, Mike here, one to 10 grade for the coaching and front office hires and what the team record next year. So Mike with the super chat, always getting priorities with the super chats uh, when they, when they come up there. So a lot of people, by the way, did end up saying uh cornerback and middle linebacker was uh, another one there. So let's uh, let's answer Mike, Mike's question here for his $10 super chat stoner grade from one to 10. We'll say one is the worst. 10 is the best. Uh, for all the coaching and front office hires, just at collectively mm -hmm. as a whole. And then mm -hmm. what do you think the team's record in the early, early stages, by the way? We haven't done free agency. We haven't done the draft. What's the mm -hmm. early, early, early stages of what you give them? Um, I'm going to go with, for the coaching and front office hires, I'm going to go with about an 8.6. The Bobby Johnson one what is what knocks it down a little bit. And then, of course, as you know, I'm not high on Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury, but I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. So I'll say 8.6 is my grade. Yeah, I think that's fair. Roger going to go with an 8 as well. I'll give it a, a 7.5. Uh, normally very positive here in the Perry household, but I'm, I'm uh, going to hedge my bets a little bit. I think there's a lot of good potential here. I do understand the concerns when people talk about too much experience, too mm. many people coming from different backgrounds. Too many, so it's going to be uh, really important. Too to, many uh, alphas. Yeah. It's going to be really important for them to kind of figure that out and get into that aligned vision that Dan Quinn and Adam Peters are talking about. Because if they can do that, this is going to be a, a banger staff. But if, if uh, they struggle to get on the same page, then Washington will struggle. The difference between a playoff record and not a playoff record will depend on whether or not the staff is together on the same page. And that gets us to the next part of uh, of Mike's question here. What do you think the team record is going to be at this point? I refuse. I refuse to answer that question. I cannot I don't, do it when, when I have no idea who any of the players are going to be. You know the answer. You After know the answer. You know the answer. It is 17 and 0 until we find out otherwise. Yeah. 100%. So thanks again, Mike, for the $10 super chat. Okay. Um, can I just say something real quick, Nathan? Of course. I don't know can. what you did when you were connected in your audio board, but do yeah. that from now on <laughs> because that the sounds are coming back, coming by how they're supposed Perfect. to be. Perfect. It was actually a software update. They fixed the, the ducking <laughs> issue. <laughs> nice. um, yeah. So. Uh, a lot of people agreeing nine on the coaching and nine and eight record seven and eight seems pretty good. So Mike, I hope we gave you a good discussion 
for your solid donation. Great donation. We appreciate that here. So most people seem to agree with you, Stoner, when it came to the offensive tackle. Me, personally, it's the pass rusher. And you got several good ones out here on edge rushing. You got Brian Burns. You got Josh Allen. You got uh, Daniel Hunter, Bryce Huff. I mean, you can even get a Chase Young if you want. Zadarius Smith is out there. Mm. To me, this is a position that Washington, if they do not spend money on their edge rusher, then you should expect them to take an edge rusher with one of their high picks. They're probably going to do it anyways. Mm -hmm. But if they don't, if whoever they buy, right? Like if they buy offensive line and free agent, then they're going to go heavy on the D pass rush. If they get your spend money on a Brian Burns, who may or may not get tagged in Carolina, Carolina does not want to let him go. They had trade offers on the table and they kept him. He doesn't want there in Carolina. Maybe he wants here in Washington. We'll have to see if that deal ends up working out. But if you get a Brian Burns, then maybe you wait until one of your third round picks to get another pass rusher. Mm -hmm. But Washington Mm -hmm. has a desperate need at elite pass rushing talent. And so I would love to see Brian Burns here. He's my, he's my top choice. Uh, Josh Allen, uh, not far behind Hunter and Huff. Also really good. Zarius Smith would be fine. Uh, I would stay away from, um, Clowney and Chase Young. I know they're kind of the same side of a different coin or two d- different sides of the same coin, rather. Um, but yeah, botch that one, Stoner. Botch that one. Uh, so how about you? How about how about the edge rushers for you? Any of those names really gonna you want to give up? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like all of those. All of those are are quality pass rushers. I mean, what uh, Daniil. Danielle, however you say Hunter. his name, Neil, I yeah. think Hunter. What yeah. he did in Minnesota this year was outstanding. He was very dominant. But I, I do like the Josh Allens and Brian and uh, Brian Burns of the world. Those are extra talented kind of guys. But I can't give them, uh, Nathan, I can't give them $25 million a year. I can't, I can't spend 25% or 30% of my available cap space on one edge rusher and that's what they're going to get because as you said it's either the second or third most position so therefore mm-hmm. they're going to get the second or third most amount of money in the off season so i don't think that that's what they should do um yeah. in the off season this year free agency i think they should draft guys that they hope are going to uh, do well i mean they're going to have to get guys because they don't have any on the roster they have absolutely zero on the roster unless you're talking about Shaka Tony. He's the only one still under contract and I don't even KJ know KJ Henry and oh, yeah, Jones Henry. Jr. the rookies right, the rookies right. are still out there sure. You're the, right, yeah. But those other guys they're all gone. Yeah, the Washington's in a bad spot as far as edge rushers. Now Roger brought up the point here with the uh you don't know if it's a 3-4 or 4-3 defense. Too. If it stays a 4-3 you're going to need edge rushers. If it's a ends up switching to a 3-4 then Washington has some options there because they can put Mathis in a, like the nose tackle and push out Allen and Payne on kind of those edge spots. And then you have um, your linebackers playing that more of a role. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. I do believe it should be a 4-3, but I wouldn't be – it'll be interesting to see what they they do. Lock, locked on law, agreeing with me, going to be a 4-3. Uh, that's what it is. It's really hard to switch – uh yes mass collector we still have ridgeway as well um it's really hard to switch back and forth we've seen that here in washington when they kind of go back and forth and do that kind of thing um so i just feel like it's going to stay a four three until we get the personnel for a three four uh gus bus had share i I popped this one up here but i wanted to talk about this one yet again to kind of I, i keep mentioning i have a spreadsheet i'm working on right now and th- it kind of dives into this right here. It's so important to lock up an edge rusher and free agency so we don't reach in the draft. The spreadsheet that I'm, I'm, I'm making currently is going to look at the last four years worth of draft picks in the top 100. And it 
talks about their snap counts and it's going to have like an expected value of snap counts. So of course a wide receiver is only going to be out there for a certain amount. So uh, of your snaps anyway, so you don't expect them to be out there on a hundred, but it's kind of trying to figure out where the positional value is in those top 100 and where you should be kind of spending your picks. Spoiler alert, early readings on this say interior offensive linemen are excellent in the second and third round. You're going to get a lot of value, uh, starter value out of them. And probably the most surprising to me was pass rushers and how often Mm. they failed Mm. in the NFL when taken in the top 100. Surprising. Mm. It really was because I'm, I'm really big on Washington with one of their first three picks picking a, an edge rusher. And now I'm not so sh- certain because it turns out edge rushers don't nearly make the impact that uh, when taken in the top 100 that you'd expect on average compared mm-hmm. to the, some of the others. So again, I am very, uh, I'm still trying to put this together, tr- still trying to get all those kind of things, but it is going to come out probably next week, if not next week, then uh, later on. So that, that's yeah. going to be good stuff. I, I like when you put together these spreadsheets and, and gives you more data to, to make better uh, opinions about mm-hmm. some of these players uh, that we may want in free agency or not, or, or when to draft a guy, when not to draft a guy. So that's going to be a good spreadsheet. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the finished product uh, there. So we talked about edge rushers. Let's move on to, the line right we talked about the building from the trenches you got the the we talked about the defensive line let's get to the offensive washington may or may not have a center right tyler larson's uh free agent not likely to come back stromberg was drafted in the top 100 but he was guaranteed not to see the field now they put him out at, at the left guard position and then he can't even necessarily win that, and he got injured. So here are the centers, the top, uh, some of the top centers that are out there. You got Cushenberry, uh, Biadaz, James, Williams, Brown, Brewer, Dieter. I, McGovern is out there. There's not too much I actually know about a lot of these centers. This is probably where I would want to spend some of my draft capital. Yeah, on the center position. Yeah, unless unless Ricky Stromberg is the guy, we don't know. Maybe he is. Maybe this new regime likes him at that center position. I mean, the last regime liked him at the guard position, and we know how they are at evaluating talent. So maybe he is actually a pretty good center, and this team won't have to go out and spend on him because, yeah. I mean, it just seems crazy that you do take a guy in the top one hundred as a center and then you he wasn't even was even third string in training camp at the center position i i think yeah. he, maybe he was third string but yeah i think because it was nick gates Kyle larson and then it was tromberg and i remember there was the one of the training camp days and he was and stromberg was on the sideline when the first unit went in the second unit went in and he was one of those guys that when the second unit of offense was in and they just needed some guys to play defense just to give somebody to stand up against, he mm-hmm. was one of those guys. Like yeah. the defense is on the other field, right? So there is no defense. You just have to have bodies out there. Coaches mm-hmm. are out there filling linebacker spots or whatever, and they just throw it. That's what Ricky Stromberg was doing. And so maybe it wasn't a great draft pick and they do have to spend in free agency, but yeah, they need a center. This off because Tyler Larson, God bless him. Yeah, he's not the guy. He he's he's been the fourth or fifth center on this team for a while. Got a chance as the second center, but yeah, Tyler Larson not going to be on this roster. The the thing with Stromberg, and and I agree, we're not going to sign one of these free agent centers, but sticking with the Stromberg discussion, Stoner, I don't think this coaching staff can definitively say whether or not he is going to be the center because he didn't get a shot at it last year. Yeah. And so they're going to go off of the scouting report that they had of him coming in the league, which yeah. they may or may not trust at this point. <laughs> right. So I just don't see it kind of coming in there with uh, 
with with that one there. So uh, how about the guards? This is another one here, Stoner, that I just think that they're better off spending one of their top 100 picks on. Like I said, there tends yeah. to be a lot of value out there. But, I mean, you could get like a Zeitler. There's Kevin Dotson, Robert Hunt, Jonah Jackson mm-hmm. that are out guard. there. So there's there's potential chance to get yourself a guard to kind of – hunker down that left side because the right side is Sam Cosme and I yep. expect him to get a deal before the end of the season is over because he yep, seems very much like a Dan Quinn kind of guy. Agreed. Yep. And and you don't have to pay a lot for guards, right? So you don't have to necessarily use a huge chunk of your cap. So yeah, I think they will go out and get a guard in free agency. Left side was Sadiq Charles and Chris Paul and God bless Chris Paul. I was kind of high on him. You're really hoping. high on Chris Paul. Well, I mean, he had one. His first game this year was actually pretty darn good. Uh, but then after that, he was really bad. And what, I think he what was a up- bigger misstep on your part, Stoner? The Sam Howell is him or the Chris Paul is him? Well, I said Chris Paul should have been considered for uh, Offensive Player of the Week in the NFL <laughs> that, that first week. Yeah. And I do some of that kind of tongue in cheek or, you know, to have a little fun with it. But, um, I mean, Chris Paul was just really disappointing in, in everything that he showed in that game against Dallas last year, that last game of the year when he finally got his yeah, sol- solid outing. Sure. He was he was really darn good. But, mm. you know, we should have known that he couldn't beat out uh, Andrew Notwell. He couldn't beat out um, – who was the guy on the other side? Trey Turner. He couldn't beat out Sadiq Charles. Mm. So we should know at that point ba- that he's not the guy – uh, to be your left guard. So it's disappointing. Sadiq Charles has been a disappointing. What was he, a four, third or fourth rounder? Fourth rounder, yeah. He was a fourth rounder who was actually expected to go a lot higher. Uh, so, yeah, they're going to have to upgrade there, and it's not going to cost you a lot of money. So maybe go out and get one of those um, better free yeah. agents. Braden Daniels, maybe. Again, these are going to be people that yeah. they're going to have to kind it's of, uh, you know, figure out early on um, whether I mean, or not and- they're worth it. Andrew Wiley did play guard a little bit uh, in Kansas City. Uh, well, actually quite a bit, not even a little bit. But he played right guard. I don't know. It's just so easy. Like a lot of people want to sign a left tackle and move Charles Leno to right tackle. It's not that easy. The guy's been playing left tackle yeah. for 10 years. And the same thing with Andrew Wiley. He's played right guard and right tackle. It's not easy to just say, okay, now go be a left yeah. Go Usually if you're a swing tackle, like the backup tackle and you're a swing tackle, you yeah. spend a lot of time working on those techniques to be serviceable in both to extend right. your life in the not for long right. league that is the Cornelius NFL. Lucas yeah. is a great example of that. Yeah, absolutely. So let's speaking of the tackles, this is somewhere where we feel Washington could certainly upgrade whether or not it's yeah. on the left or the right. I'll, I definitely defend Charles Leno uh, mm-hmm. probably more than I should, May- mainly because people talk about him as if he's like the 50th best tackle, uh, left tackle out there, and he's not. Uh, but you do ha- got some good names out there. Uh, Onwenu, Williams, uh, Tyron Smith, who we talked about on Monday. Trent Brown is out there, former yeah. first rounder in Becton. I mean, is there – is there a big need, do you think, to go ahead and get an offensive tackle here yeah. in free agency? Yeah, I think uh, offensive tackle is is a really big deal to try and get. When you're going to draft a uh, a guy, again, let's just say it's Drake May at number two, you have to have an experienced left tackle to protect him. You don't sure. want him back there getting beat up from the blind side too much and just kind of have him looking over his shoulder all the time. So you need that. You also do need to draft a guy and then have him develop over the next couple of years, hopefully, that you can then slide in. That's kind of what they did in Chicago when Charles Leno was there. They drafted a guy to kind of be his eventual replacement. Then they went ahead and cut him, and then that guy wasn't even the guy. Mm-hmm. So that was the mistake they made. But they made. But I like that idea of drafting a guy to be Charles Leno's replacement or drafting a guy to be a Tyron Smith replacement uh, because Tyron Smith is, if you watched our video that we put out uh, yesterday or Monday, that's the type of guy that I think Washington should go after. 
He's going to cost a little bit of money. He is injury prone. And same with all these other guys. They're all injury prone and they're going to cost some money. But get a guy who can get over there for two or three years mm-hmm. and protect your rookie quarterback's blind side. Yep. Uh, JG, maybe that'll be a cool down topic for next week. So uh, potential trades. Maybe that can be a fun uh, topic. Writing it for down, us. JG. Absolutely. And Brian here, 75% chance Leno is our starting left tackle opening day. Dala Dala. I'm with you, Brian. I think that it's going to be Charles Leno. Uh, again, if you spend a high, if you spend a second or third round draft pick on a tackle, most of them ended up being right tackles. Nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that. An important mm-hmm. position. Absolutely. Uh, so that is uh, somewhere where Washington could potentially spend. Uh, spend some of their money. They can also potentially spend some of their money and value on a tight end free agent a wise. Mm-hmm. Some uh, good ones. Yep. Uh, so you have Noah Fant, Schultz is out there, Hunter Henry, Parkinson, Bryant, Everett, uh, Trotman, Gasecki is back on the there, Austin Hooper, uh, Farrell Brown, who a lot of people um, wanted as well. So where do you fall on the tight ends in free agency? Yeah, they're probably going to have to go out and get one of those uh, because Logan Thomas has the type of contract where it's where he's probably going to uh, get uh, cut and have that dead cap because they're going to save a lot of money against this contract. Look, Logan Thomas, he's not done done, but he's done, right? He's, he's at that age mm-hmm. and at that place where he might have another year, maybe two years to where he's just kind of hanging on. But – we need to move on and get somebody again in this air raid offense who's going to be uh, a very important role. Somebody who can find those holes in the zones and force them into man to man. So your outside guys can do uh, some damage. So moving on from Logan Thomas, I think really there's five or six guys that can come in here and do some work. And all those sure. guys that you talked about the fans, the Hoopers, the Gasekis, uh, the Henrys. Uh, Ferguson, did you say the guy in Dallas? Is he on that list? Uh, no, no. Ferguson. What was the guy kind of in the middle? Oh, this is I got rid of it already, so that's oh, what okay. that's what I get here. Hold on, maybe I did mention it and I just have to bring it up here. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, Parkinson, Bryant, Everett, Trotman, Parkinson that I was thinking of then, but yeah, so these are guys that are kind of Logan Thomas lights, all those guys. But think of those guys who have done damage el- elsewhere, the Dalton Schultz's of the world, the world, uh, Gusecki. I don't know what did what's his name ended up doing. Uh, guy who's in Philly and then Arizona Ertz. Did he sign somewhere? Already? He signed like, with was it? He signed with one of the playoff teams and then didn't see the field. Oh yeah, right didn't even yeah yeah. Uh, but guys like that who have had success in one spot and then got a nice contract and didn't necessarily do anything again, like Hooper and Gusecki. Those guys are the type of guys that can come in here um, and do some pretty good damage for Washington. And you put it up there earlier that Lockdown said about Armani Rogers. I mean, he's one of those guys that we watched and we're just super impressed with. And hopefully he can come back from his injury. What yeah. was what was his? Was his uh, his knee? Uh, I think it was a knee? knee. And JG brings up the point here: how much confidence we have in a guy who spent the whole year and. Yeah. IR. Yeah. It's it's Especially gonna be like six six and and converting you know. to the tight end position. So yeah. it's it's gonna be I, interesting I like to see him. whether he can say it. I, I think I'm very excited about him, but you know, who knows? Maybe Curtis Hodges finally cracks the uh the roster as well. He was on the 53 up until like the final few years here. Wide receivers, we talked about your love of Michael Pittman Jr. That one's gonna come out on Sunday. Uh, Mm -hmm. But there's also the likes of Hollywood Brown. You got T. Higgins, Mike Evans, who I know you love. Calvin Ridley's back on there. Mm, Uh, Gabe Davis is is out there. Donovan Peoples-Jones. DJ Shark was somebody had mentioned, uh, someone in the chat had mentioned. Um, So that's right, Brian. Thanks for that. Hodges did get cut after finding himself injured late in the season. What a waste of a roster spot. Like, mm-hmm. like no, no offense to Curtis Hodges, but it was just yeah. an interesting personnel he decision was, on their part to make him a healthy and active all year long. Then he gets injured. You put him on IR and then you cut him. It just felt like a waste weird. of uh, ability there. So uh, Gregory, big fan of Ridley. 
Pittman was the one you picked. Is there anybody else on that list that you would like? I mean, you you couldn't talk me out of uh, T. Higgins. I like the T. Yeah, Higgins, T. Higgins uh, is nice as well. He's probably going to get the most money out of all these. Uh, right. Uh, Darnell I'm Mooney hoping. is there as well. Mm. Uh, I'm not. There, there's some of those though. I'm not in favor of like the Hollywood Browns and uh, give me a couple others again. OBJ, uh, Donovan Peoples Jones, Noah no, Brown, no. KJ Osborne. Mm. I mean, we got to stay away from these six foot, 190 pound guys. They need a big receiver, period. And so, whoever that may be, Pittman, Higgins, they're about the same size, about the same speed. Uh, for whatever reason, Higgins was a little bit more explosive in terms of his average per catch and his TDs, but um, Pittman caught a whole lot more. I, they need a big guy. Yeah, so I'm I'm starting to come around on the the DJ uh, Chark thing. Sure, I, I think that one might be someone who I. Uh, that's a bargain bait. That's a base a yeah. bargain kind of. We don't like those. We've tried that, and so fans sure. would not be happy with a guy that they're going to try and bring in and and not as a starter, right? Because that guy would probably be a starter. He'd be the number three receiver. Yeah. So uh, we don't like bargain hunting for starters. Yep, that's that's fair. Uh, Gregory asking when does free agent start? So the legal tampering period starts March 11th. Uh, so that's when teams can start talking to outside free agents. Of course, for those who want Curtis Samuel to remain in town, they can be talking to them right now. So uh, that is uh, the difference maker there. Running backs, any running backs that you want to sign to the team? I'm I'm of the market of you just go ahead. And I'll take B. Rob Rodriguez and um, player X to be determined. Yeah, Jared Frigid Patterson, Derek Gord, Jonathan Williams. It doesn't matter. Jonathan Williams, free agent. So, yeah, there you go. He's a free agent, but he's a Ron guy, so I don't know if yeah. he's going to be around. All right. Last but certainly not least, any of the free agent QBs. A lot of people started talking about maybe you take. Uh, sign Kirk Hudson Cousins back here in Washington, and then you can afford to take Marvin Harrison Jr., who I agree is probably the second best player in this draft. Uh, no, no, <laughs> I, I'm not signing any free agent, not starters. No, Pro Bowler Gardner Minshew. No, nope. Sam Darnold. You like Jacoby Brissett? Yeah, but I I don't see a need for him sure. in Washington. You have a backup quarterback who gets paid um, one million dollars a year, and you've got him for two more years, and he's fully capable of coming in yeah. and playing if your rookie quarterback is either hurt or is not mm -hmm. getting the job done. So there's no reason to go out and spend eight to ten million dollars a year on a Jacoby Brissett type. Sure. Uh, back on the uh, running backs, Gregory was wanting uh, Barkley. Locked on law agreed with that. Um, so they, the great, great running backs and Derrick Henry out there as well. Just not. You, it's not the value isn't there at the running back position. Uh, locked on law with with my home favorite here, the Oklahoma favorite Baker Mayfield. I think if this were last year, we we're in a different QB conversation. Mm -hmm. Last year. Absolutely, uh, I think in the market for a vet QB this year, you're drafting one. Sam is going to be your backup, and then you're probably going to find yourself another undrafted free agent to kind of round out your your emergency QB. Who knows? Maybe Jake Fromm uh, is still around on the roster. So yeah, I I'm not going to go ahead and take any of these uh, QBs. I. The, it was tempting taking maybe one of the better free agent QBs and pairing them with a with the Marvin Harrison Jr., but I I'm gonna pass. I want I want somebody who's gonna be here for the next decade, and I want them to take them uh, in a high draft pick. Tommy earlier had asked us, would you draft the Alabama kicker with the later round picks? I don't even like drafting uh, kickers in fantasy. So not going to draft one in, in the real life draft. And the last but not least conversation for tonight on this 160 episode is how, you know, will we see uh, free agents want to come here 
now that Washington has a new owner, a new staff, has a lot of people that seem to want to be here and things really do feel different. What do you I think, Stoner? I mean, logically, you would think that we might be getting a little ahead of ourselves with that because we think these are great hires, but, you know, do uh, does Michael Pittman Jr., Brian Burns, Tyron Smith, do they all agree that Washington is now a place to be? Kind of have to wait and see on that. Sure. We, we, don't, we don't know for sure yet. If they start signing guys for not top dollar, then, then you're going to say that, okay, maybe this is now the place to be because anybody can sign William Jackson the third for for forty market premium dollars. sure right for premium dollar anybody can do that including Washington so let's see if Michael Pittman Jr. comes here with the fourth highest free agent wide receiver contract when mm. he's arguably the second best on the board that's kind of what we got to see because guys will go anywhere for the right money but will you get the type of guys that are going to help a team win. Maybe you're maybe you're going to get somebody like a um, just throwing total names out here. Maybe you get a Tim Settle that wants to come back because he sees something that's happening. Just a depth piece, but guys who want to come back and be a part of something. We'll see. Yeah, the the wrong edge rusher is a free agent, in my opinion. Former Washington free agent, uh, or sorry, edge rusher is a free agent. I would have loved to seen Montez Sweat come back. But well, that's not going to happen. He's going to stay in Chicago. What is Chicago going to do with that number one pick? Well, we've got a lot of time to talk about the draft. Like I said, if you have a player you want us to focus on, either for the draft or free agency, we're going to do free agency first, but then we'll start to get in those draft profiles. This has been episode 160 here. We talked about all the new hires, which players we would want to retain, and then free agency on there as well. I'm Nathan Perry. That's the stoner here on a wonderful valentine's day we appreciate everybody uh, stepping up with us of course we're brought to you by both bet online and don't sleep energy and until next time happy valentine's day mrs stoner be a fan <laughs>